All right, welcome back, everyone. Thanks for listening to another Steady Wealth podcast today. Good friend, and actually, we've, I've I've known Fausto now for it's probably been more than a decade. Uh, is here with us today. We're going to talk about something quite different today, and that is order flow and something really quite unique in terms of uh, at least for for our viewers. Uh, first of all, Fausto wants to. I welcome you. You have an awesome Ita- last Italian name. I was just telling you offline before. I have a lot of, oh, I, have, I have one good friend that's also named Pugliese. But let <laughs> let us know quickly where are you from? Cyber Trading University. Um, what give give us your your quick sort of one minute. Yeah, sure. So listen, I've been doing this for 35 years, and it's great to have me on this show. It's good that everyone's here and, and welcome. Uh, but yeah, I've been doing it for about 35 years, one of the original day traders that started back in the early 90s. And, you know, I do a little more swing trading and a little investing, but, you know, I run a professional day trading room, just like you, educate a lot of people how to trade. You know, um, the market's been very good to me. I like to give it back. But, you know, being a market maker living here in New York, which is the financial capital world, I learned from some of the best traders in the industry. And it kind of just taught me just how to be more of an institutional trader, just follow order flow, which I'm being so excited to teach all you listeners how to actually trade those markets and how to see, you know, not just what's on the left of the chart, but now you could actually see what's on the right of the chart and the right is the future. And that's yeah. what we're going to focus on. I think it's a great explanation. Um, you know, one of the things I like about this format is that I'm able to talk to people, whether they're long-term investors, value guys, you know, technical stuff, uh, structural analysis, when it comes to, you know, more esoteric things, derivatives, cash instruments. Uh, and in your case, now we're talking about really day trading from a, from a, like I said before, from a bit of a different perspective, it's Cyber Trading University. Is is it dot com or is it ctu.com? Yeah, it's not dot com. Yes. Is it ctu.com or just Cyber Trading University? Well, you could you can go to ctu.co. You know, as a short That's version it. of it. Um, okay. Lucky was able to get three letters, but um, Cyber Trading University is really the full name of it. You know, um, and I and I basically came up with that name because you know the internet, you know, the cyber market, you know, and basically trading. And so. you've, you've been around forever doing this and and uh, and sharpening those skills. Um, maybe give us just a little bit of an idea and a definition. And I know we're going to look at uh, some some charts and things on here. Mm-hmm. But if you give us a little bit of a definition, like what is it all about? Like the what is order flow? Why does it even matter? Right? I think a lot of people are just we live in this day and age, and I I, I say this respectfully out there. I think we live in a massive gambling bubble with an overconfidence of individual people's. Uh, 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 overconfidence in their ability to manage their own money. Because really what, what it's come down to, we've had a 15-year bull market and everyone's just drawing a line on a chart and calling that analysis. I'm going to say that's silly uh, to, to be polite, but give us give us your take on, on what you're doing and how that's probably a bit more in-depth than that. Well, you, you know, Serge, it's, it, 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 yeah, it's a great question. And I think everyone, like I just came back, I, I was up in Toronto, I did a, a speaking, had hundreds of people there. And you look at the, these people's faces, they're really, really lost because they don't understand. It's all about, yeah. you know, uh, like what makes what makes some one different than the other. Well, first of all, a lot has to do with psychology. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you got to know and you got to learn how to be disciplined. You got to learn how to lose first before you can make because you're going to lose. All right. But the style that I was kind of trained is that before I was an actual trader, I was a broker and, you know, and like anybody else financial analysts telling people the book value P ratios, all that stuff. But uh, there was this, there was this department that I was so overwhelmed and, you know, being in a boardroom with, you know, 200 people, you know, and then seeing there's only like three, four people in this one room. I'm like, what do those people do? Why is it that is the most important room of the whole brokerage account? And it was a trading department. And when I went in there, believe me, they don't want you to know what they're doing. Okay, they go out there, they tell you, Serge, hey, we're going to buy this and this is how you have to buy. Meanwhile, they're on the other side selling it, you know, selling, you know what I mean? Like, you don't know what they're doing. So when I when I crossed that bridge, I went there, I'm like, my God, if I only knew what they were doing, I would be that much better of, you know, of a of a broker or an analyst. And it's just you. the whole thing is just seeing where the street is now. What the listeners have to understand is that when I started, it was like a private club. There was only a certain amount of people that had access to have a seat on the exchange. You had, you know, you had certain licenses. You know, you had to be backed by a brokerage firm. Now you don't need that. You could do it on your own. The exchanges took away those rules. That's why when you look at like CNBC, and you're like, how do they have their recording, their studio down there on the Florida New York Stock Exchange? That place I heard was chaotic. 
they're gone. They're not there anymore. They, 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 they eliminate all those seats. Everything is electronic. They're working out of their offices. And the exchanges want l- learn that why are we only allocating to these a group amount of people? Why We want to make it a free market system. Let everybody out there and place those orders. So, And that's why I love teaching people because I could get to show you that now you could – you know, if you had the opportunity to have a seat on the exchange church, why would you not go there? People would pay, you know, paid millions of dollars to have a seat. Now, of course, you're like nothing, you know, and it's just great to show people what's on the right of the chart where everyone's so focused on the left of the chart. And the right of the chart is seeing where Goldman Sachs, Sherson Lim, Black, BlackRock, all those big block orders out there, you know, those institutions that you wanted to see, that data is available to you. And I'm so excited to show everybody here because it's going to really change your perspective of you know, not changing our style, just showing you a little bit what you probably could help you come about better of a trader. Yep. No, I love it. And I think one thing that is always important to 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 maybe mention up front, you know, when you, you reference CNBC, it could be any other, you know, TV format. One of the th- ways to very quickly eliminate most uh most sort of um, heated debates is by making sure we first state what's the time frame that you're referencing, right? This right. was a number of years ago, I was, and I got a call from CNBC, and the girl said, hey, I need you to come on to this thing. And it was just like a half an hour warning. I was like, half an hour warning. Anyway, and she said, oh, and I need you to be bearish on Apple, and you have to defend that from a day trading perspective. It's literally what they said, versus Shark yeah. Tank, whatever the Larry guy was, whatever the, guy, the Canadian guy that's a Shark Tank guy, whatever. Anyway. And he's long and he's arguing the bull case. I'm like, first of all, I'm not a day trader. And that's, I mean, I do, but not like to that extent. Um, I'm, not, I'm not bearish Apple. And you're talking about a five minute time frame. The guy's got a long term investment case. Like there's no, there's no argument. There's no discussion there, right? Right. So to, to, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because um, you're talking about day trading here, right? These are intraday flows, right? Just to be, to be making sure we set the table clear. Right. Yep. Okay. Right. Perfect. So, so anyone here that's coming in with a longer term view, this is a day trading order flow thing, and it and I think it's fantastic. So, if you if you're okay with just sharing your screen and going through some things, I think that might be the best way to just go about this. Absolutely, but, okay? it, but it's but Serge, it's also you can view them long term. Like I'll yes. show you just now. Even like we'll talk about like Nvidia for example. Like people like always like I, I do so many shorts, you know, on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and, you know, when happy, you, I think everyone here should watch those videos. Yeah. You'll see some of the views. I mean, some of them went completely viral. And what's funny about it is the comments, these people, like, they're just like, oh, you're anti, you know, this stock or yeah. that, you know, we're talking about. I'm like, listen, I'm on your team. Listen, I'm just, I'm just showing you like, we're, we're, we're the same party. We're the same. We're traders. You just got to have a game plan, and mm. that's you have to look at that way. But yeah, let me let me show it to you a couple of things. Let's go right to the market, yeah. and then. Uh, and by the way, that point that you bring that up right there, when people get triggered, when you're in this case maybe bearish or something on Nvidia for like a half a day, that really goes into what I said before. I really do think we have, we're we have a a gambling bubble on our end. Not it's not a valuation bubble. A lot of people are trying to do is uneducated. But you're sharing your screen now, so I'm actually going to yep. move. Just to be clear, just in case, I don't want you guys to think I'm not looking at, I'm actually, I'm just moving the screen over here. So if I'm not looking at the camera, it's because I'm watching what Faust is showing us. Yeah, no problem. So um, what I'm going to show you is basically, like we're looking at NVIDIA, right, for example. So mm-hmm. um, you can see NVIDIA right here on the long term. The stock, obviously, you know, everyone knows NVIDIA, the great run up with the AI crap and mm-hmm. stuff. So you can see NVIDIA here, you know, beginning of the year, and this is before the split, uh, had a great run up to about 140. And then it started coming back down and it hit 130 and then came all the way back down to 90. Okay. And then it mm-hmm. came back to 130, whatever. You could see like the, the, the highs and lows. Now, the, that w- what everyone would agree here, and, and if you can't answer this question, you shouldn't be trading, I tell everybody. What makes support and resistance levels is buyers and sellers. That's it. Okay. Now, it would be great to see if we knew that seller was here. At 40, and the buyers were here at, at 20. The sellers were here at 35, and you can see the buyers are at 90. We can see that. And I'm going to show you now because right now you want to see the right of the screen. Right now we're just looking at the left of the screen and the, and the left of the chart. So I'm going to bring over something here is called level four, okay, that we call it. So what you're looking at right here, I'm going to zoom out a little bit further, a little bit further, and a little bit further. 
Okay, so what you're looking at, this is NVIDIA. This is the future. These are all the orders that are out there right now as we speak. And you see all these orange lines. Now, where you see this little blank line right here, this is 9.30. It's when the market opens up. So there's these things that are called, you heard, program trading. And usually these orders come in right at 9.30. And you could see how all these orders out here, if you follow that line, go all the way to the right, you could see all the way from $150, which is the, called the current order book, you got 1.6 million shares looking to be sold there. Uh, 1.9 million, almost 2 million at 140. Uh, you, you see here at 135, which is about 1.3 million. Mm. And then you could see a huge, what we call a stack of orders from 130 all the way down to 124, 900, 500, 600, 900, quarter to 2.5 million. Now, when you look at that, and if I move this over here to the right, maybe that could probably help out a little bit. You could see where the supports and resistance levels are on the chart. You know, you could see, okay, mm -hmm. now, oh, I know why 135 was the resistance levels because there's 1.3 million share seller out there. I could see why back here in August, 130 was resistance levels. Oh, you got 2.5 million. And actually in the past month, it's been having a tough time. So, you know, depending on what you're, your, your st stock you're looking at, we could look at any stock and obviously some of them will look a little bit, you know, different than others, you know, and we could zoom in a little bit in and out, but at least you know where you are, you know where the street is. And that's what everyone has to understand. You are not an analyst. Okay. Um, and you shouldn't pretend to be because, and it's sometimes analysts are wrong, but you can't screw and get BS with the orders. Yeah. Those orders are out there. Those are real orders, okay? They're not fake orders. I have these people always have me surge. I'm like, I don't know those are real orders. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> I got, you got, you got, um, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, I'll bring up a calculator. I always like to joke around about this. Uh, so we got 2.55. All right. So we got 2.5 million times 130. I don't know. You, you want to dish out $300 million in stock? You have 300 million? Let's go test it out. Let's go hit execute that guy. You tell me how real it is. You know what I mean? And, and so, tell us, uh, just, for, just for, uh, so for people who are seeing this for the first time, um, right now on the left, the order book that you're showing there, right? Right. That is the order book on what time frame? That is, is that over the course of multiple days? Is what a, oh, no, that's intraday, actually. That's, no, that's, that's intraday. Actually that's today as, yeah, exactly. So just for, to, and I'm just, I'm trying to make a point. So people understand what's an order book, right? So when I used to be an investment banker on the fixed income side, the 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 order book is its OTC stuff. That's a bit different than this. So this is actually market placed, right? So you can see this stuff, exactly, like these, right? So there's a big difference. So like this is it, this is the benefit, right? So this is the benefit of this. So these are people placing orders in the market that have yet to be executed. So that's why you're saying, and I love how how you place it. It's you, you say it's the right hand side of the chart, the stuff that hasn't happened yet, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. And that's, so, and that's why, you know, being a good trader surge is you have to have a game plan. A lot of people always have this, you know, this issue where they tell the top, the stock tells yeah. them where it's going. Yeah. You should know where you should know where it's going before it gets there. And these orders are all out there. This is what we call program trading. You know, these, all, listen, the, the, these market makers, you know, trading, you know, not trading one stock, they're trading multiple stocks, you know, and these, these, these trading firms. So they have all these orders already defaulted. They already know who's out there and, and they're always just backing themselves up. You know, just like with options, you know what I mean? Like some people here, like, I don't understand, like, why does the stock have a target? You know, where is that target number coming from? Mm. You know, well, right there. You mm. know what I mean? That, that's your target. You know, they, they, there's targets, those big targets that you see, you know, on those options are the same thing here. And by the way, not to change even another thing, this also applies towards futures and it also applies towards cryptocurrency. Mm. You know, you can see, you can see all the Bitcoin orders out there all over the world. Which That's is pretty fantastic, and, and just maybe just one, one more time on 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 the left hand side with the, in your order flow uh, chart, the bubbles. I think that just want to get people just to kind of see that because you have a very nicely visual thing. The red bubbles are sell orders, right? The bigger the okay. bubble, the larger the sell orders out there that are going to get executed. Well, at least to the or going forward, right? Correct. Yeah. Those are the time in sales. Yep. Those are the time in sales, and that bubble right there, which I call them balls. Um, so, and the bigger the ball, yeah. the bigger the bowling ball, you know, 
Um, so that's what I'm saying. Like I like to call bowling balls. They're called dots, but I call them bowling balls. So, so you know, you obviously got a bigger bowling ball, the bigger damage it will do. So <laughs> that means more orders were traded at that moment of time. And you could see like here in the video, when the market opened up, came up to this big million share order at 125, yeah. you know, and it dropped all the way to 122. You know, mm -hmm. why did it drop? Because of these big orders. And you could see red, 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 red. Yeah. It was a small order here right around 122 that kind of supported it. And that's why it bounced. But mm. listen, they do it on multiple stocks. I mean, mm. I mean, going down the list. Yeah. yeah. So no, it's fascinating. Now you mentioned program trading, and I, I, I just would like to see if we can, we can also kind of expand this conversation a little bit into something that I, I know you and I have actually talked on before on your show, and something I've gone down a sort of the the rabbit hole on for now the better part of probably 15 years and that's the whole algorithmic aspect right the the algos that are out there to to what extent i mean it's obviously a large extent but but how do you fold that into this right because i make a big deal explaining to people that listen the algos are controlling the world these days in terms of the markets are no longer acting like they used to i'm sure you would probably wouldn't disagree too much it used to be a different it used to be, be differently not, not i'm not saying better or worse just things used to be different now the algos how do you fold that into the mix well, the algos, I'll give you one algo that's going on right now. So here's stocks. I'm going to bring up this one here and show you what's going on. So everyone's probably familiar with, uh, with the stock that trades side by side with NVIDIA is SMCI. Now, this is called supercomputers. Um, this stock right here just did a 10 for one stock split. Mm -hmm. It ran, you could see it, and that's why it's not it really wasn't 120. It was actually 1200. And, um, you know, right here, you can see it came all the way down to 40. I mean, they just made it, they just did a 10 for one reverse split. So the thing that's cool about this stock is if you want to look at algos, this is an algo. Okay. So let me just bring this up here and show you what's pretty cool. So you see all these stacks right here. These mm -hmm. are all algos. So what happened here, and this has happened over the course of the day. I'll bring this over here on the right. That's algos. So there were orders out here from Fort, uh, 4180, he got filled, 4160, 4150. These are all algos at, at, every, at every price level. Um, and then what ended up happening, it hit this big, right? Then algos kicked in once we got close to $40. You see, I got a 200,000 share buyer. You see all these mm -hmm. algos kicked in. Just called a, we call this a, you know, a, um, a four layer cake, a five layer mm -hmm. cake. And that's basically what's happening. So now it came up to these buyers, which are these algos. And that's why the stock went up. And it's just so cool because you could see all this data. And then mm -hmm. you could see like, you know, as, you, as you're working out, I mean, you know, moving out, I'm just zooming in because right now it's what time is it? You know, we're, we're at 1130. So mm -hmm. you could see when I zoom out, you could see now all of a sudden these algos started kicking in right around 430 to mm -hmm. Uh, forty three dollars up to forty three sixty. So now you got the algos there, and you got the algos here. So these ones got filled up over here on the left, and then it came up to these buyers. And now that these guys up here that showed up around ten thirty are going to prevent it from going any higher. Now you're looking at the future orders. So you got all these orders you got to deal with as the stock went up. Like right now, obviously the stock's trading at forty one thirty. So good being a good trader, you could say, okay, well I got a lot of people I got to deal with at forty three, and I got a really big bunch of buyers here at 40. And when you go here to the chart and you want to figure that out, if I drew my trend line, you want to know why did the stock stop here right around 43? Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe because of this. You know what I mean? <laughs> and then you want to know, okay, well, why did the stock stop and bounce right around here? I'm like, oh, I don't know. Maybe because of this guy, you know, like right here. So it's, it's all about having a game plan. Mm -hmm. And if you just knew where the algos were and all the program trading is, you could have knew where to get in and where to get out. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and the hardest thing to teach here, Serge, is what your listeners have to understand is like sometimes it's kind of – it seems too easy. You know what I mean? It's like, it can't, it's like, like is that really true? Is that really that easy? It is, but the hardest part about it is being the discipline part. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not being greedy, you know, and like – just following it, that people are like, ah, you know, I don't want to take a loss, but oh, maybe it'll, maybe we'll bounce and go higher. It doesn't really happen that way. <laughs> so that just comes with experience that's and time. Yeah, uh, that's the hope and pray strategy, <laughs> which is done in antichrist words. You never say that. You never. Yeah. If you're a, a hope strategy in trading, you're in big trouble. I tell yeah. people, you know, yeah. 
Never yeah, use yeah, that yeah. word. And when I hear that, they're like, uh oh, you're, you're really in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Well, this is fantastic. I mean, and when, when you look at this, and, and I'm, I'm just trying to think of like maybe some of the questions someone might have, uh, you know, you look at this, I mean, to me, these are the kind of things where this is the kind of strategy where you want to look at things that move, right? So you look, you're showing in video, you're looking at SMCI. Right. I mean, this is probably not something you want to look at a snoozy stock that hasn't moved like a Nestle that hasn't moved for like 30 years, you know, stable as hell, but it's never going to move. I mean, you got to look for stuff that moves, but would you say there's a limit? Like there's also crazy stuff out there that moves way too much, right? I mean, would you say there's like sort of like a fine middle or is that? Well, yes, because um, like you'll see PLTR right here, yep. you know, has been, a, a stocks have been doing extremely well, mm. you know, let me bring up so you can see here on the chart because, and I'll kind of answer that question a little bit. So PLTR, um, you know, Stock's been doing great, great company, been doing phenomenal, great mm -hmm. contracts. Stock's been on a big run. And this is where people have this misconception. Like, well, I never heard of PLTR. Why would I trade it? I trade Apple. I'm like, okay, great. It does. It works on every single stock. But as a, as a trader, you know, and I know, it's all about risking the least amount of money as possible to high mm -hmm. amount of reward. Now, the thing that people always ask is, okay, well, how do I know it's going to continue to go higher? You know, is it too late to buy it? Mm -hmm. There are times when it's too late to buy it. And it's too, there's times when it's not. PLTR had a huge 400,000 share seller right here at $40. And you could see how that big green bull got filled. And now that buyer's not there anymore. So that's called a breakout, you know? Now, if you want to talk about what you just mentioned, you know, it, it, can it get more complicated? Yes, it can. And I'll show you what I'm talking I'll show you how that happens. Um, let's look at an ETF because it doesn't work too well on ETFs. <laughs> so let me try socks, for example. Or, uh, yeah, let me bring up uh, S O X S. See if it, so I'm going to bring up an ETF. So this is where it gets a little confusing. So as the data is loading up, so now you'll start seeing it's kind of messy. You see how it's not clean yep. as much? Yep, choppy. It's very choppy. So it's really kind of hard to see it where you look at NVIDIA. It's like, oh, you see clear as day. You see the big block orders. But when you're looking at the SOX or any other ETF, it's not as clean. Um, you see what I'm saying? Like even going all the way out, you really can't really see the real, you know, this is where you get all the algorithms just like they're just like boom, 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 boom. They're going all yeah. over the place. And that's what makes it a little bit difficult. Yeah. But um, yeah, and, and I mean, listen, if your listeners – are interested like how to get some of this stuff. Um, once again, uh, you can have my book for free or you can pay me $47, you know, <laughs> yeah, I'll give it to you for free. Just email me a thousand of PSCTU Corp. But what would be better is for all of you right now, if anybody here would like to kind of like maybe play around with this thing, um, you go right to NASDAQ search. I mean, um, you can go right to, you know, NASDAQ actually, controls about 50% of the market of all the trades that go on. Yep. Um, I do a lot of presentations for NASDAQ on this because NASDAQ, you know, wants people like me to come out there to teach you guys a little bit more about this stuff. And, um, you know, you're not going to get it with the chart pattern on it. That's a separate tool. And I wouldn't worry about that right now. Just play around with this thing right here. And, um, you know, you could see where the orders are. You can see big block orders and everything like that. And, um, uh, you know, just like where I want to show you. Yeah, right here. Uh, yeah, right there. Just email me and I'll, I got like two quick videos you guys could watch because I don't want you, anyone here not to get the wrong one. You know what I mean? Yeah. And pay extra money for something you need. And you know what? You know what's crazy about this, Serge? This costs $15. You know, the exchanges, that's all they charge you. Yeah. Some brokerage firms offer it, but you could have a seat on exchange for 15 bucks. I mean, like, why would you not want that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's fascinating. No, yeah. I love it. Now, maybe just a point of clarification there in the end. In order to do this kind of stuff, like what, you know, this requires you to have a seat? No, or don't. You, you don't, exactly. That's no, you because you're clearing to. it up for people. Yeah. In the beginning, you used to. Not anymore. They got yeah. rid of that rule. They, they, they yeah. took it away. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yep. So and now if someone wants that seat, they could pay 15 bucks or just nothing, right? You're just paying the exchange fee. That's exactly. all you're doing. That's how the exchanges make their money, you know? And, you know... What's crazy about for me I, is like when I tell somebody like, you know, like, and you know, the surge and you, and you probably tell everybody this, if you're somebody who's looking to buy, get some free stuff, 
you're wasting your time. You know what I mean? And I, honestly, you know, you, you, you're never going to make money in the business. There's no such thing as free lunches. And I think everyone agrees to that. There's always, there's a, there's a catch, right? How do you make money by working? You don't work for free. So, but you just want a good deal. So, you know, um, so there are things you got to be careful. There are companies out there that will sell you stuff that you can get this stuff and they'll charge you. But I'm just telling you, go right to the exchange and just, you know, and you can get it for what the cost is, you know, yeah. just having a seat. No, I love it. I think this is, I think this is fantastic, Faust. And I appreciate, again, I, I really enjoy giving people different perspectives from different things. So this has probably been an eye-opening uh, uh, sort of point of view for, for, for a whole bunch of our viewers. Because it's just, again, it's a world of, I, I, I don't deep, go too deep into, but, uh, but it really goes into the algorithmic area of things so people have a better understanding of order flow. So, uh, so thanks for being here, Fausto. Uh, I hope to see you at some point soon in New York. Nice. But um, this is where you guys can access. The website is uh, it's either ctu.co or obviously yeah. you can email Fausto at that email address there. Yeah, you can email me. You know, If anybody here wants to come yeah. and join uh, and see that live in the trading room before you do anything, just go right to ctu.co forward slash free and yeah. uh, just register there. And uh, we'll give you a one-week access to the trading room so you can actually see it live. So if you don't even want to spend the 15, I'm like, yeah. You know, I want to know if I want to do that. Come join me for free. That's fine. Do it for free. You know, I'd rather, you know, listen, we're here because we want everyone here to be educated before you go out and make the dumb mistake and do a trade. Mm -hmm. And the worst thing that can happen is that you get stuck into something and something gets crushed and you try to dig yourself out of a hole, you know, surgeon. That's what we don't want. You know, you know, it's funny. If you do a search on chat GTP, it'll tell you that trading is like a 90% failure rate. It's like, why would you want to get in this business? Yeah. You know, that's true. But then if you ask somebody, well, if you got, trained by a reputable company, you know, you'll see that you'll jump from like, you know, from being a 90% failure rate to like almost a 50%. So now you got a 50, 50 yeah. chance. Yeah. So well, I think understanding it, you know, the full picture, a lot of people, again, try to cut corners or, or, or get, you know, a freebie and try to then do it themselves. And it, it's, uh, it's like having a bad golf teacher. When you start playing golf, you'll never learn how to play golf. Ever. Yeah, or, or it's like running, a, trying to start a business. They're like, wow, yeah. you know, you got, you have a great business. I want to do what you do. I'm going to open it myself. Yeah. And like, well, don't you think you should like work for somebody first to see if you yeah. can do it? No, I don't waste my time. I'll do it myself. All right. Exactly. Let yeah. me know how that works out for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just don't hear back from those guys. Well, listen, <laughs> Felder, thanks so much, man. This has been a lot of fun. And again, if you guys would like to uh, look at Fausto, what he does, uh, just to be clear, like we're not, there's no kickback here in our end. I just really, you know, I, 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 I like Fausto and what he does. So I figured we would uh, show, uh, show people a different aspect. So thank you, Fausto. And, uh, thanks, Serge, for having me. We'll talk to All you again right. soon.